Well, we just finished learning how to identify the atoms that are candidates for resonance. Now, before we move on to the next section of the videos, ask yourself whether you feel you learned anything from the examples that we just did. If you missed any of the examples we just went through, or if they were difficult for you, then before you go further, you should go back and redo those examples on learning the can on how to identify the candidates for resonance. If you feel you've mastered that material, let's proceed. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce the concept of owning, sharing, or lacking electrons. If you look at any pair of electrons, an atom might own the electrons, it might be sharing them, or it might completely lack those electrons. Uh, let's look at an example. Well, I'd like to focus on this lone pair, this lone pair on the nitrogen. So what would you say is the relationship between the nitrogen and the lone pair? Would you say that the nitrogen owns the lone pair, is sharing it, or lacks it? I hope it's clear that this nitrogen owns the lone pair. This nitrogen owns this lone pair. It's not sharing it with anybody else. So if you have a lone pair, a lone pair is never shared. A lone pair is owned. Now then, what's the relationship between this carbon and the lone pair? What's the relationship between this carbon and the lone pair? Well, this carbon just completely lacks the lone pair. This carbon here has no, does not have any possession of the lone pair, so we could say this carbon lacks this lone pair. That doesn't mean that the carbon doesn't have any electrons of its own, it just means that this carbon does, uh, lacks this particular pair. How about this carbon and this lone pair? Well, this carbon also lacks the lone pair. So the nitrogen owns this pair of electrons, this carbon lacks this pair of electrons, and this carbon lacks this pair of electrons. I've erased the lone pair on the nitrogen because I don't want to focus on that pair anymore. Of course, it's still there whether we draw it or not. Now I've drawn in the two electrons in this pi bond because I want to focus on that pair of electrons. Now I want to focus on this pair of electrons that I've drawn, drawn in in the pi bond. Now, what's the relationship between the nitrogen and the pair in the pi bond? What's the relationship between this nitrogen and the pair of electrons in the pi bond? Does this nitrogen own that pair? Is it sharing that pair? Or does it just lack that pair? I hope that was pretty easy. Um, the nitrogen just completely lacks that lone pair. The nitrogen does not have any ownership at all, um, or even sharing, of uh, uh, um, this pair of electrons in the pi bond. So I shouldn't say this is um, a lone pair. Um, I should say that uh, the nitrogen here lacks this pair of electrons in the pi bond. Now, what's the relationship between this carbon and the pair of electrons? Well, this carbon is sharing this pair of electrons. The carbon is sharing the pair of electrons. Um, it doesn't own it like it would if it was a lone pair. It's just sharing these electrons with this other carbon. So this carbon is sharing these electrons. And what's the relationship between this carbon and this pair? Well, this carbon is also sharing this pair of electrons. So you can see the general rule. If an atom has a lone pair, it owns the electrons. But if an atom has a pi bond, it's sharing those electrons. If an atom has a lone pair, it owns the electrons in that lone pair. And if an atom has a pi bond, it's sharing the electrons in that pi bond. And of course, it's totally. And, and then, uh, of course, other atoms might completely lack any relationship with the electrons. This atom over here lacks any relationship at all with this pair of electrons. It's neither owning them nor sharing them. So, if the pair of electrons is not your lone pair and it's not in your pi bond, then you completely lack those electrons. Here's another picture. Now let's focus on this lone pair. I've drawn in this lone pair because I want to focus on it. What's the relationship between this carbon and this lone pair? What's the relationship between this carbon and this lone pair? Well, you owe 
you own your lone pair. So this carbon owns this lone pair. How about this carbon? What's the relation relationship between this carbon and the lone pair? This carbon and this lone pair. Well, this carbon just completely lacks the lone pair. This carbon lacks this lone pair. What's the relationship between the nitrogen and the lone pair? This nitrogen completely lacks this particular lone pair. It has other electrons, but the nitrogen lacks this pair over here. So this lone pair is owned by this carbon and lacked by this carbon and this nitrogen. I'm going to erase the lone pair because I don't want to focus on it anymore. It's still there, indicated by the negative charge, but I'm not focusing on that. Instead, now let's focus on the pair of electrons in the pi bond. Now we're focusing on this pair of electrons in the pi bond. Well, what's the relationship uh, between this carbon and this pair in the pi bond. What's the relationship between this left-hand carbon and the pair of electrons in the pi bond? I hope that's easy. This carbon completely lacks any relationship with this pair of electrons. This pair of electrons isn't a lone pair for this carbon, and it's not in this carbon's pi bond. So this carbon completely lacks that lone pair. How about this carbon? What's its relationship? Um, and uh, I think I keep misspeaking and saying lone pair when I should be just saying the pair of electrons in the pi bond. Well, this carbon completely lacks any relationship with this pair of electrons in the pi bond. How about this carbon here? What's its relationship with the pair of electrons in the pi bond? Well, this carbon here is sharing these electrons in the pi bond. Because they're in a bond, it doesn't own the electrons, it's just sharing them. Who is this carbon sharing these electrons with? It's sharing them with the nitrogen, because the nitrogen also has the pi bond. So what's the relationship between the nitrogen and the pair of electrons in the pi bond? Well, we just said this nitrogen is sharing those electrons. So this pair of electrons in the pi bond are being shared by the nitrogen and the carbon, and this carbon over here completely lacks any relationship with this pair of electrons. So I hope this is a very simple and easy to understand idea. Okay, now the reason why these concepts are useful is because they help us to get a grip on what types of transitions are legal when we're drawing resonance structures. So we can go between these two levels. A pair of electrons can go from being owned by an atom to being shared by the atom. Or an atom that used to lack a pair could start sharing a pair, or vice versa. So if the atom lacks a pair, it can start sharing the pair. Or if it's sharing the pair, it can go to lacking the pair. Or if it's sharing the pair, it can go to owning the pair. Or if it's owning a pair of electrons, it can go to sharing a pair of electrons. But this is illegal. This is the big thing that you're not allowed to do. You cannot go from owning electrons to lacking them, or from lacking them to owning them. That is not allowed. You're not allowed to take electrons that you completely lacked and then start to own them completely. Or if you own a pair of electrons completely, you're not allowed to draw another resonance structure where you completely lack those electrons. So please cross this arrow out. This is the transition you're not allowed to make. So that was the main point I wanted to make here with these concepts. You can't go from owning a pair of electrons to completely lacking them. And you can't go from lacking a pair of electrons to completely owning them. That's not an allowed transition. By the way, I, I might mention that you can see that I keep talking here as if in resonance the electrons are moving from one place to another and as if the, um, the molecule is changing from one thing to another. But remember, all of this is just a figure of speech. Remember that nothing is actually changing when we're drawing resonance structures. It's all just a figure of speech. We're just pretending that things are changing just to help us think a little bit more clearly about what's legal. Remember that in actuality, the true picture of the molecule is not changing um, and the true picture is a blend or average of all the different resonance structures. But we're not actually moving from one resonance structure to another. There's a single picture that's a blend of all the other pictures. But it's really convenient to talk as if we were transitioning from one picture to another. So I'm going to keep talking.